Among 20 snowy mountains, the only moving thing was the eye of the blackbird. The first is hidden high in a mahogany bookcase. It shows the full expanse of room where he lies sleeping on a queen-size bed among a heap of pillows. The headboard is intricately carved. The bed frame, sly-shaped. The duvet, Amish patterned. An urn sits on the left bedside table, a stack of books on the right. An antique lantern clock with exposed weights and pulleys is hung on the wall near a long silver mirror, freckled and browned with age. Beneath the mirror, tucked in a corner, almost hidden from view, is a small oxygen tank. Half a dozen pillows are placed in the armchair, away from the bed. Several cushions rest on an oak chair with leather armrests. The writing table sits near the doorway, with a number of papers neatly towered a silver letter opener, a seal embosser, an open laptop. There is a pipe on the desk, but no tobacco box, matches or ashtray. The artwork is contemporary. Three urban landscapes, sharp lines and blocks, and a small abstract seascape on the wall by the bathroom door. Amid it all, he lies lumpen in the bed, a blanket shape, his head little more than a blur. I was of three minds, like a tree in which there are three blackbirds. I was born in the middle of my first argument. He should rise, find a notebook, scribble the phrase down. But it's frigid in the room and the heating hasn't yet kicked on, so he'd rather not move. But at least the sheets are tight and warm. Perhaps Sally came in to retuck him, since he seems now to remember the journey, or the several journeys, or more to the point, the endless voyages to the bathroom. I was born in the middle of my last epic voyage. Above him the ceiling fan turns. The handyman have reversed its usual spin. But how is it that a reverse spinning fan creates warmth? Something to do with the updraft of air and the way a current flows. If only we could catch the draft, reverse our spin. I was born in the middle of my first jury argument. Strange to rethink the memoirs at this age, but what else is there to do? It was a surprise that the original book didn't sell well back in the 80s, nicely published, nicely packaged, nicely edited. All the niceties. Even with a modesty pill, he would have thought it would sell a few copies here and there, but it ended up after three months on the remainder tables. I was born in the middle of my first public failure. But when was it really, truly? I was born the first time I made love to Eileen. I was born when I touched the hand of my baby son Elliot. I was born when I sat in the cockpit of a Curtis SOC tree. Ach, bullshit, really. Bullshit with two capital L's. Truthfully, he was born in the middle of that first case when he stood in front of the Brooklyn court, a fresh plucked assistant DA, and he shaped the words exactly the way he had dreamed, and they entered the air, and he could feel the way they fluttered, and what they did to the, fe to the faces of the all-male jury, and what they did also to the sympathetic judge who beamed with something akin to pride. A very solid argument, Mr. Mendelssohn. He knew right then he would never turn away. The law was what he was made for. How many eons ago now? He should write it down. But the problem with age is you have the feeling, but not the dates. And find the dates, you lose the feeling. A pencil and some paper. Sally, my dear, is that too much to ask? I was born in the middle of my very first memory loss. Why, oh why, is there never any paper by the bedside? Maybe I should use a tape recorder. One of these little digital marvels. Perhaps there's one on my Blackberry. It has, after all, everything else. He has taken recently to tucking it in his, into his pyjama pocket, where it remains during the night, the little red pulsing. A wondrous machine. It brings news of all the latest triumphs and terrors while he dozes and snores. 
coups and wars and revolutions and rebellions and other sundry sadnesses all plotting their escape from the comfort of his bed. Interesting, that. They designed the pyjamas so the pocket sits on the left-hand side over the heart. Something medical, perhaps. A little compartment for the doctor to search. Somewhere to hold the stents and tubes and pills in case of attack. The accoutrement of age. He could ask his old friend, Dr. Marion. Why is the pocket over the heart, Tim? Maybe it's just a tick of fashion. Who in the world invented pockets for pyjamas anyway, and for what purpose? A place for a little extra bread or cracker or toast in case we get hungry during the night? A spot for the love letters from long ago? A slipcase for the alter ego waiting out there in the wings? Oh, the mind is wandering, plotting its escape, out a frosted window and away. And who was it anyway? Invented the cool side of the pillow.